Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church of Sparks online worship service. I'm Lori Stevens, the church administrator, and we're glad you're here. In the sermon today, Pastor talks about meeting Jesus at the point of your total desperation. It's the story of Martha and Mary confronting Jesus about the death of their brother Lazarus. I know you'll enjoy it. So please remember to help us out by hitting the like button and subscribe. When you do, you'll be notified whenever we have other videos or other content. Also, we are on Instagram and Facebook. Like and share and subscribe. Take your Bibles, the Word of God, and turn to John chapter 11, starting with verse 17 through verse 27. I've entitled the sermon, From Defeat to Victory. You know, sometimes it's impossible to find a parking place. I heard about a guy who was driving around looking for a parking place. The lot was packed. He finally resorted to praying. He said, Lord, if you find me a parking place, I'll promise I'll never miss another Sunday at church and I'll start giving every week. <clears throat> at that very moment, a miracle happened. A car in front of him backed out of a prime parking place. As the man pulled in, he said, 
Never mind, Lord, I found one on my own. I hope that, I hope that doesn't describe you this morning. In John chapter 11, in a small town named Bethany, there were two sisters grieving over the death of their brother Lazarus. Their grief is even heavier to bear because of the circumstances surrounding his death. Lazarus had been sick and dying for many days. The two sisters, Mary and Martha, sent a messenger to Jesus who was down near the Jordan River. The message was urgent and simple. Come quickly, Lazarus is dying. Lord, please come and heal him. But Jesus delayed for several days before he headed to Bethany. Meanwhile, the messenger returned to the sisters. They expected Jesus to arrive and raise their brother from his sick bed. But there's only silence and waiting at the bedside of their dying brother. Then he died. Jesus was a no-show. The sisters are hurt and confused. Why didn't he come? Our story picks up as Jesus arrives four days after Lazarus had died. Look there with me. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the, the world. <clears throat> In John's Gospel, Jesus makes seven amazing I am claims about himself. And every time Jesus said, I am, he was confessing that he is the same God who revealed himself to Moses at the burning bush. One of God's names in the Old Testament was I am. And Jesus says in the New Testament seven times, I am, identifying himself as God. Here are those statements. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will not hunger. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I am the door. If anyone goes in by me, he will be saved and go in and out and find pasture. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And finally, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. And everyone who believes in me will never die. In this sermon, I want to focus on what Jesus said, what Jesus meant when he said, I am the resurrection and the life. In the next sermon, we'll talk in detail about Jesus calling Lazarus back from death. But in this sermon, I want to examine the interaction between uh, Jesus and Martha. I've entitled the sermon, From Defeat to Victory, or From Death to Life. Martha had experienced an emotional setback because of the death of her beloved brother. <clears throat> to multiply her misery, there was the nagging accusation 
that this setback could have been prevented if only Jesus had come when they had called him. This morning, I want you to learn how Jesus can turn your setbacks into comebacks. Everybody has setbacks. It may be a setback related to finances or health or career or relationships or even old age. In fact, you might be in the middle of a setback right now. I've noticed everyone loves a comeback story. That's why the Rocky movies are so popular. And we all agree that a great comeback story was when Jesus called Lazarus to come out of the tomb. And because Jesus is the resurrection and the life, he can turn our setbacks into comebacks. Sometimes when we experience a disappointment or a setback, we want to hide or just be alone. It was part of the Jewish custom that Martha should have stayed in her home setting for Shiva seven days after Lazarus had died. Shiva is the Hebrew word for seven. Those that were, were required to observe Shiva, setting Shiva, were father, mother, brother, sister, daughter, and spouse. But when she got the word that Jesus was on the way, she couldn't sit still. The Bible says as soon as Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary, the Bible says, remained seated in the house. The wording makes it clear that Jesus hadn't even arrived in the city, and yet Martha was running out to meet him. Now, she could have stayed in the house, or she could have run away from Jesus, but she did the right thing. She ran to him. So I ask you, what is your setback? Has someone you love died, or is dying, or left you? Are you struggling with some kind of sin or addiction that you can't seem to conquer? Or perhaps you are just physically overwhelmed from taking care of all the people in your life. You may be struggling with depression or deep discouragement. Our most natural reaction is to hide out or to run away from God. But you need to do just the opposite. You need to do what Martha did. You need to run to Jesus. You see, the Bible teaches he is our own source of hope and help. And the Bible teaches Jesus will meet us at our point of desperation. But there are some people who are struggling, but they haven't come to Christ because they think they can still work out their problems on their own. You see, they haven't come to the point of total desperation. And I'm saying when you are at that point, that's when you can turn to the Lord and meet him. So the first thing you do when you, you've suffered a setback is to run to the Lord. Cry out to him. The Bible gives many invitations. Jesus is inviting you today. He says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Just so we see Martha coming to Jesus. She doesn't say hello. Sorry you couldn't attend the funeral of our, your good friend Lazarus. No, she gets right to her complaint. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Her grief was mixed with a sense of outrage and disappointment. Actually, Martha is giving Jesus a piece of her mind. Her setback led to words against Christ. She said, Lord, where were you? We sent for you, and then we waited and waited and waited, and now he's been dead for four days. If you had been here, he would still be alive. Do you see my point? If you are upset today, it's important to express your pain and your disappointment to the Lord. He can handle it. Be open and transparent with God and tell him where you are hurting the most. Don't just think about it. Do it. We sometimes say something to God like Martha did. Lord, I prayed and prayed. If you'd only have done this, then that wouldn't have happened. 
And so like Martha, we start the blame game toward the Lord, ourselves, or someone else. Whatever the source of your setback, you can be honest with the Lord. The Bible says you can cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. So what setback are you facing this morning? Is it about money or health, your marriage, your future? Is there some fear that's troubling you? Whatever it is, the Bible says, tell it to Jesus. I know setbacks are hard. I've had a few in my life. Everyone who's lost someone they love long before it was their time, you feel like the days you had were not enough when you said goodbye, and all the people with burdens and pains that are, you think are keeping you from life, from really living, and you believe there's nothing, and there's no one who can change it or make it right. As the song says, there is hope for the hopeless, rest for the weary, and love for the broken heart. And there is grace and forgiveness, mercy and healing for you. What I'm saying is, Jesus will meet you wherever you are. And you need to cry out to him, cry out to Christ. As our president often says, what have you got to lose? Now listen, there is always a turning point where Christ turns a setback into a comeback. <clears throat> At this point, Martha considered Jesus a miracle worker. She knew he was a gifted teacher. <coughs> but she had, hadn't understood yet that he was God, very God standing before her. Martha said, my brother's dead, but I know whatever you ask of God, he will do it. Jesus said, Martha, your brother will rise again. And Martha gave the correct answer, but it didn't help her pain. She says, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the end of time. But you can just hear her thinking. But knowing that doesn't help me today. I'm hurting today. It was a religious answer but it didn't ease her pain. It was the right answer, but it did ease her discomfort. That's a problem with a lot of people today. They know the correct answer. They know the correct biblical answer, but it doesn't really lead them to a sense of peace and joy. <coughs> and then Jesus drops the bomb. He goes to a to move her from a place of abstract belief, something about the future, to a present personalized truth. He says, Martha, you don't have to wait for a future resurrection. He says, the resurrection is right here. He's standing in front of you. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Now listen. <clears throat> the resurrection isn't just an event, it's a person. So your setback can become your comeback when you see Jesus for who he really is. So let's follow the steps. Martha was in the depths of a setback. She ran to meet Jesus. She was at her point of desperation. She got honest with him. She said, Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. She was, she was honest. She was transparent with him. But then Jesus turned the tables and said, Martha, if you really knew who I am, you wouldn't be upset with your setback. You wouldn't be upset, back, upset with Lazarus' death. I'm not just someone who's waiting for the resurrection. He says, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Now, Jesus put Martha on the spot. He said in verses 26 and 27, Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. 
do you believe this? She said, yes, Lord, I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who comes into the world. So Jesus revealed his deity to Martha. But then he asked her if she believed him. Three days earlier, when she was angry at, at Jesus, she might not have believed that. But hearing it from the lips of Jesus, she said, Lord, I believe you are the Son of God. It was from that moment that Martha knew that her setback was going to turn into a comeback. In order to complete the story, let me give you a preview of what happened next. Jesus continued on to Martha's house. Her sister Mary comes out and falls at Jesus' feet, and she says the same thing. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. There was a crowd gathered at the tomb. And the Bible says there was much weeping and wailing being expressed. And then we see the compassion of Jesus because the Bible says Jesus wept. Showing the tender heart of Jesus revealed by those tears. He knew that Lazarus would walk out of the tomb. And yet he was so touched by the grief of others that he cried with them. They pointed to the shallow cave where a stone had been rolled over the opening. Jesus told them, remove the stone. Martha said, Lord, are you sure you want to do that? After four days, there's going to be a bad smell, a foul odor. Jesus said, did, not, did I not tell you that if you believed me, you would see the glory of God? And then he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Now, I think it's important to notice at this point that Jesus gave life back to him. But Lazarus would die again. The first man who would be resurrected and never die again would be Jesus, who came back from death and is alive forevermore. Now, <coughs> now before they buried Lazarus, they wrapped his body in strips of cloth from head to toe. So Lazarus was basically a mummy hopping out of the cave. And Jesus said, loose him and let him go. And when they unwound those grave clothes, Mary and Martha looked into the eyes of their brother, and he was living and breathing. And their sorrow was turned to joy. So the worst day of their lives had become the best days of their lives. Jesus had turned their setback into a major comeback. And just so, Jesus can turn your setbacks into comebacks. You know, there are hundreds and hundreds of comeback stories. Some say that Tiger Woods winning the 2019 Masters at his age is the greatest comeback story in sports. That was big. But Tiger doesn't give the Lord any credit for it. But there's another sports hero admired even more. Her comeback ranks at the top of any list. Bethany Hamilton was a 13-year-old girl in Kauai who loved to surf. In 2003, she was attacked by a shark and lost her left arm. After losing nearly two-thirds of her blood, there were doubts that she would even survive. But she lived. That was a pretty big setback. But within a month, she was surfing again. Two years later, she won the National Surfing Championship. Two movies have been made about her life, The Soul Surfer and Unstoppable. 17 years later, Bethany is married with two sons and still competes, winning surfing champion competitions around the world. Her resilience and faith in Christ has inspired thousands of people. She gives God all the credit for her remarkable comeback. She says, I grew up in a Christian home. When the shark attack happened, I already knew that he, God, had me in his care. And I trusted that he had a plan and a reason for all of this. I totally believed that. I still definitely rely on my faith in God. And just say, Lord, I don't know why I lost my arm, but I'm going to trust you and know that good can come from this situation. 
Now, I've said that to say this. Maybe you've had some recent setbacks, or you are facing some setbacks in 2020. I am saying stay close to the Lord. Talk to him. Tell him your pain. See him for who he really is. And be ready to be blessed because he is the expert of turning setbacks into comebacks. Amen. And of course, it starts with asking Christ into your heart. Would you do that this morning? Would you pray right where you're at this prayer with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner. I ask Jesus to forgive me for all my sins and take me to heaven when I die. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I hope to see you next week at the same time. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy